Hi lovelies on Facebook. How are you? Hello there my lovelies on Instagram. It's me Donna Hoffman. Welcome to our Facebook Live here on Tuesday. Every Tuesday we stop what we're doing here at our luxury design studio. They call me the interior design advocate because I erase the ugly room, the uncertain result, the disappointing result, and I do that with my amazing online courses. And I have been honored to be called one of America's leading interior design coaches for design lovers, lo design lovers across the country and beyond. And when I'm not doing that, we are running a luxury interior design company here in the Philadelphia region of the United States. In fact, just before I came out here, which is why I was a little, uh -huh. when I came out here, we're just having some technical problems. I was talking to a really super builder um, about an interesting project that they'd like me to hop onto. So, perfect topic for us today, given all of the renovation and new building that we do with our clients. I love teaching you guys about things that will make your life easier and kitchen renovation on a lot of people's minds. In fact, it's interesting with COVID, seems like more people are spending more, te more time at home, working from home. So people are spending more time thinking about how they want to facelift their home. People are spending less on vacations right now, unfortunately. Um, so people are putting a little more time, attention, and resources into their home. So that's all good stuff. So let's talk about kitchens and why are they, I'm going to fix my shot there, why are they just one of the most ugh, dreaded and difficult renovations that you will ever go through as a homeowner, and I mean ever. Well, let's state the obvious first. Dust and debris. It is a massive mess in your home. It is. You want to make sure you're hiring a great, 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 great crew, a great builder, or a great a kitchen reno group, kitchen bath group, who's going to do a terrific job, run a clean, efficient site for you. You want to hire a group that's going to clearly state what their start date is, what their finish date is, what, and, and tells you from the time they receive all your materials exactly what your install is going to look like to minimize your downtime. You don't want a group that's going to be kind of disappearing in the middle of your job. It has happened. I've seen it happen. You want to make sure that you're real clear on where you're going to have your ancillary eating area, right? You're not going to be in the heart of your home, your kitchen. Look. So while they're doing that rip out, it's a mess. Now you're in your dining room and your refrigerator is run either into your garage or it's in your laundry room on a giant extension cord and you're using a toaster oven and a microwave and you're, it's just that kind of thing. You're grilling outside if you can, a lot of paper plates, but your dining room kind of becomes your makeshift kitchen really. That's a pain in the neck. It's the heart of your home. That's a pain in the neck. I still haven't gotten to why it's the biggest pain in the neck, but we're getting there. Cost is also kind of stating the obvious, right? It's one of the most expensive renovations you're going to do on your home. Of course, you'll recoup a lot of that when you go to sell, hopefully, if you do a good job. So costs, you've read blogs on that. You've read blogs on the the the, the tumult. You've, you've, you've read blogs on the, the, the disturbance to your home. But let's talk about another big area that makes this one of the toughest, toughest renovations that you'll do. It has to do with the cost and the type of decisions that you have to make. When you are building something that is custom, it doesn't exist, right? This kitchen in your brain doesn't exist any place. There's that word alchemy, right? It's, it's a word that I believe springs from the Middle Ages, and it has to do with kind of this magical transformation <clears throat> of matter into gold. But it's this transformation of something that wasn't there into something else. That alchemy, that's really what design is in total, isn't it? But absolutely so for kitchens. You are taking little swatches of things, little teeny swatches of countertop, little swatches of countertop, little swatches of countertop, and you're trying to figure out what swatch of cabinet, what swatch of cabinet, what swatch of cabinet, oh, how about uh, this swatch of cabinet or this swatch of cabinet, trying to figure out what in the devil is going to look good together, right? So yeah, you do that when you're working in your living room or your new master bedroom, but the costs aren't quite what they are. And also something that's very difficult when you're working with these swatches is that you're not seeing ratio of color. Well, that's a bad combo. You're not seeing ratio of color, right? 
how how much of this do you see versus how much of this? And I don't, haven't even brought out the tile yet. So being able to conjecture from small swatches, not only what will lay well together, but you've got to keep reminding yourself that, yeah, this backsplash that you're so hung up on, it's an 18 inch strip across the, the backsplash, right? It's an 18 inch tall strip, unless you take it up to the ceiling, a trend. We'll be talking about trends next week. Um, you have to really keep reminding yourself on ratio. I see clients and families that we teach um, get so hung up on the hardware, like, oh, I can't move, what I? I'm so stuck up between these two hardware choices. The hardware is a small element, layered element and important, but it's so small within the whole context. So when you're dealing with kitchens, you have to keep reminding yourself context. What's my context here? What is what is this scent sitting next to or near? What's the ratio? What do I have more of? I have a lot of that cabinetry color. I have a, a, the second most prominent, my floor. My floor is really prominent. What color is that? Where am I creating contrast? So there's a lot that you're juggling, just as you do when you're doing your new bedroom design or your new family or your home office, but you're working from these tiny swatches that you are not considering to the degree in terms of ratio. So when you think of a wall color, that's a lot of real estate in a space. Well, your cabinetry is a lot of color real estate in a space. So is the floor in your kitchen. Your countertop is a lot of real estate in your kitchen, more so than you know your coffee table or one element in a soft furnishing design paradigm. So I think for clients and families who are doing kitchen design, it can be very daunting to go from these small swatches that you know are going to be blown up to the size of a room. You pick out a small swatch, fabric swatch for a sofa, it's going to cover a seven foot or an eight foot sofa. All right, that's it. You pick out a, a, a cabinet swatch, it's going to cover the walls, the walls, plural, in your, in your, um, in your kitchen, right? So ratio, keep that in mind. Also, um, I want you to keep in mind too that picking things out in a kitchen reno in the right order is make or break. And every builder and every kitchen design group has a slightly different methodology that they want to take you through. Talk to a terrific client today. In fact, I emailed her husband over the weekend because they're getting ready to make selections for the exterior of their home on a design build. And and, it, and this is a relevant story. I know we're talking about kitchens, but just hear me out. I could see that he, he was feeling concerned about the path order that the builder was requiring for selections of his, his exterior finishes, stone, window colors, window type, etc. And I could understand why my client was feeling confused and why they were feeling overwhelmed. So I think it's important to know who you are in design and how the kitchen design process works. Inside my Decorating Genius course, we, we focus on design in total, but there is an addendum in the course where I talk about how to apply that to kitchen design so that you, for you, are selecting the creative selections in the right order. Now, your builder is going to need things like those plumbing fixtures pretty darn early, right? Because, or your reno group, because they need to know how they're, how they're um, how they're wiring in, right? How they're how they're running in your, your your plumbing. But I will tell you this: starting your cabinetry selections first might be the worst thing in the world for you. You might be better off looking at your tile first. So, depending upon who somebody is in design, what their design fingerprint is in design. Sometimes I'll start them with cabinet. Sometimes I'll start them with floor. Sometimes I'll start them in the creative with their backsplash. So I think it's important to know who you are and how, what you need in a kitchen, what you respond to in backsplashes, in cabinet colors, in, in, in flooring, not to mention the lighting, the fixtures and so forth, hardware, etc. So knowing your design fingerprint, what you respond to and how you respond to it, really, really important in kitchen, in kitchen design. So if you can get your hands around that, you can interview the right 
in the right way for builders and kitchen groups. Find out what's your process. Talk, talk me through your selection process. Because if I have to picture what this is going to look like next to this, I want to know what order are we going in. Because chances are you're going to feel like your kitchen group or your builders working in a cattywampus fashion. They're not. They're working in their fashion. But you need to know what that process is and to know that you're comfortable with it on the creative side. Okay? And then the last thing I would tell you when you're hiring your builder or your kitchen and bath group, please make sure you are crystal clear with the kind of allowances you would like to see them create for you. Most groups, not all, but most, will give you the lower bid projections because they want to sign your project. But if you know that you're going to want the mid-end or upper end in cabinetry, if you know that you are a champagne taste girl and you know when it comes to tile, you are not going to want to have the most basic subway tile. Even though you might say, Donna, I know I want a subway tile. Yeah, I hear you, girlfriend, but there are a lot of options within the subway tile world. You don't want to sit through a meeting like one of my clients did where everything she was selecting, and I mean everything, Everything was an upcharge. You know the meeting I'm talking about, right, Katie? Yeah. And Katie's going, oh, yeah, I remember. Everything, every piece of hardware, every countertop, every cabinet color, every cabinet door style, it, everything was an overcharge. And I, we walked out of that meeting, Katie and I, feeling so bad for our client because it was disappointing for her and uncomfortable for her because she's wondering, you know, how much over am I going? But, you know, a couple hundred here, a couple thousand there, it all starts to add up at the end of the whole project into several thousands. So just be clear on how you, how you tick in design, how you tick with kitchens. If you want more information on design in total, you can always check out our Decorating Genius course um, just, by, just by going to the interiordesignadvocate.com and uh, checking out the Learn With Me tab, something like that. Again, to be clear, I don't go specifically into kitchen design in that course. I teach you what you need to know about design and designing a room fabulously. And then I have a great addendum that I added to the course about how to apply that to designing your kitchen. All righty. Oh, and the last thing I'll tell you, I'll take questions in a sec. I'll take your question on kitchens as long as I don't need a tape measure. I don't need to take out my calculator. I'm not doing that. And uh, I'm tired. And I, that I don't need to see a picture to be able to answer you well. Okay. And then I'll be happy to take your question. But uh, what? Uh, oh, oh, this is what I wanted to tell you. Guys. It is okay in all of design, recommended actually, but especially in kitchens, it's okay to start out with a concept in your brain. It doesn't have to be final selection, right? So you might choose a floor color concept for the new wood floor. Doesn't mean you have to have the exact color identified, but you know, I want it to be some sort of bleached oak in this tone, or I want it to be something really dark and, you know, like graphite in this tone. So concept is important to help guide you once you're getting into decision making. Does that hope that makes sense? Alrighty. So listen, um, if you've missed any portion of this, I feel like I'm a piece of what is, I think I'm a piece of coconut in my teeth. I had a quick piece of coconut on some applesauce. It was good. Anyway, YouTube, if you've missed any portion of this, you can find us on YouTube at the Interior Design Advocate and also don't forget, if you're not following us on Facebook, you're missing the party. On Instagram, you're missing the party. Um, at IDH Designs is our luxury design company. That's at IDH Designs. And then at Decorating.Genius is for the Interior Design Advocate. And there it is. Should I tell everybody about the invitation we just got, Katie? Mm. Oh, okay, I'll just tease it. Okay. A little invitation came our way here from the Interior Design Society for an awards gala. I mean, something else good is coming, so that's exciting. That just came, so that was really thrilling. All right, guys, enough about me. More importantly, you. Do you have a question to ask me? And if you do, I'm going to take it. All right, I'm getting all my hellos from all my gorgeous peeps, Jan and Denise from Raleigh, and Anne is in Missouri. Apex, North Carolina. Didn't I, I never heard of Apex, North Carolina. I like that. Greetings from Florida. Hello from Texas. All right, hello to all of my girls, all my women, all my peeps. And, you know, we actually had a guy watching one of my workshops with me, and he said, I'm feeling a little bit left out. Donna keeps talking to all the girlfriends and the divas. So, listen, if you are a divo, a guy, and you're watching, I think you look fabulous, too. 
and I mean that in a very platonic, non-sexual harassment kind of way. All righty. So, hi, Donna from everyone in Atlanta. Oh, hi, Donna and everyone from Atlanta. All right, these glasses are dirty and fingerprinty. Hey, another good use for masks. You can use them to clean your glasses, but they didn't even know that. There it is. Okay, so Jane Snyder saying, yay, Kitchen Reno, we have enjoyed, really, really enjoyed each three in three homes. This house is the most difficult. We have done them ourselves. That's why we enjoyed them. Okay, well, okay, I like it. Jane is saying she likes the idea of having to drink a martini. Whether there, I guess, whether there's a a uh, design of a kitchen involved or not. So you know, Insta, in my little intro inside of Facebook, I said, if you're doing a kitchen reno, put down the Alka-Seltzer, put down the martini. All right, maybe just the Alka-Seltzer. Let's talk. So that that's what that's a reference to. All right, so Judith is saying you you need art. Okay, okay. Uh, Cla Claudette is saying, what about the cabinet decor? Do you mean like the decorations on top of a cabinet? The uh, You mean like accessories? I'd like to see you take the cabinets to the ceiling if you can. And if you are in a two-story space, what you put above the, the cabinetry is important if you need it at all. And that is a large question. With a, with a big answer, and I would need some visuals actually to help you well. I don't always do a lot up there, but I know a lot of you, particularly in the South, um, in, in warmer climates, you've got these soaring two-story spaces with, uh, you know, kitchen cabinetry that, that that ends at the first story, and then you've got what do you do up top. I think you know, whenever you put something high on a second story wall like that, you need to know why you're putting it up there. And we talked about that last time, so you might want to look at last last week's. Um, you might want to look at last week's Insta and Facebook Live. Ilya is saying, "What is the best budget-friendly way to upgrade your kitchen before selling your home? Ah, oh, paint your cabinets, change out your hardware, paint the room, kind of that. that uh, edit, 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 edit. Get rid of all the stuff on the countertops. Do you really need all of the utensils on that countertop? No, they don't look good. So, you know, see if you can." Clean out the cabinets so that you can get things off of your counter. So those would be some quick ideas for you, Ilya. I hope that helps you. Um, Jane is saying, is there a cabinet company you suggest for hardwood cabinets? Oh, I was just talking to a colleague. Uh, gosh, who did you just tell me went out of business? Uh, can I come back to you on that? Um, big company went out of business and they owned another brand, which I thought was really interesting that they're all out. Um, so let me think on that. We do so much custom. I got to think on that. Um, what's your top choice for family friendly countertops? Well, right now I'm having a moment with Cambria. I have to say this stuff is like indestructible. It's great looking. You can get things that look like granite. If you want, you can get things that look like marble. I didn't pull up my marble samples, but I, I just think Cambria is doing some great stuff. So I like a lot of the quartzite products and I think they're very family friendly. Um, nothing wants a sledgehammer or a blowtorch taken to it, but um, marble I would stay away from because it will patina. I love marble, but it will patina, it will scratch. Um, and more and more we're seeing people going toward these quartzite products. So the, hopefully that helps you. That's the you know where I'd suggest you go there. All righty. Uh, if you have a follow-up, feel free. Um, kitchen pendants, thoughts on what is in right now? Oh, Deb, that's a nice question. Yeah, I think that really the thing we're seeing less of are the teeny little, you know, five inch, six inch pendants going across the island. We're seeing more fixtures, you know, hung at the island, more prominent, like two large fixture pendants, fi fixtures as instead of pendants, I should say. Um, we're seeing um, interesting modern, you know, spray of small pendants across uh, a, an island. Um, I think you can make tremendous statements now with island lighting. It's not just up to the dining table to make that statement. If you make a statement at the, at the island, though, you want to make sure that whatever you're saying at the kitchen table is in conversation with it. And... I don't think they should both be the star. I think somebody has to take the lead. It's either the island or the kitchen. That's not to say they're not both handsome. They are, but I think I think you have to watch where you're. What you're doing is the biggest biggest bang. Does that make sense in terms of scale, not in terms of style? Hope I hope that helps you without having pictures. 
Penny is saying, does a contractor really have to charge you for plumbing, gas, and electric work if they're simply replacing um, upgrading countertops in a four-year-old home? Penny, is work being done on your behalf? If it is, you have to pay for it. it just is what it is. Um, yes, if, if people, if subcontractors, a plumber, and, and, and an electrician, and the, the gas guy will have to come to your home, yeah, you got to have to pay for it. That's how that's how that game works. It's a shame they have to do it in a four-year-old home. Now that said, can you try to re can you reuse your faucet if you want to? They should be able to take that out hopefully in one piece, no problem. Same thing with your sink. Um, so you may not have to replace those things, but they're going to be running new lines, and and they may not they may not feel that your prior contractor did a great job, whether whoever did the house prior to you purchasing it or whatever. So they might have to replace all of your parts and such. Um, there's really no way to band-aid this and get a good a good result, guys. I'm telling you, whenever I've seen people try to go on the down low and save a few bucks, Penny comes back and bites you in that gorgeous diva behind of yours, and that's never pleasant. Pay, hire the best people you can afford, the people who you've vetted well. You know they do good work. They have good reviews online. The cheapest guys, watch out for them because there's a reason they're, they're, they're the cheapest guys. I'm not saying you have to hire the top, top end, the guys that are, you know, over, over designing something beyond what you need, but I would be very careful of that lowest cost bid. There, you don't get something for less, you get something less for less. And when it's the heart of your home, the kitchen, you don't want that screwed up. That, that is just a nightmare, a nightmare and a half. So, Penny, I hope I didn't rain on your parade, girlfriend, and I gave that advice to you with uh, a hug and, and well-meaning intent. All right, Carmen is saying, how do you decorate around a hide or hide ugly electrical faceplates in the tile backsplash without looking too obvious about it? Yeah, I would see if I could position the coffee maker in front of one of them and the towel holder, you know, the paper towel holder in front of another, handsome picture of you and your hubs in front of another, um, and I would let them just sort of fade into the background if, if you could. Uh, I wouldn't over fixate on it, but I would see if I could position small appliances and accessories um, in, uh, in front of them to try to, you know, minimize them. Marcia's saying, congratulations. Thank you, Marcia. We'll keep you posted on, on more news there when we know more. Um, Mary is saying, how do you decorate right when you have high ceiling living rooms? Okay, Mary, I'm going to take questions that are on topic because there are people who tuned in for this topic today. So if there's time, I'll, I'll come back to you. Um, Linda is saying, hi from Texas. I'm wanting to hire a contractor to paint my kitchen cabinets. I was told to use lacquer paint so they don't chip. Anything help, any helpful, any other helpful info you can share? Linda, my most helpful info is hire the guy. Uh, I am not a crafty person. I, I mean, I design it, but I can't make it, build it, sew it. Ugh. Definitely can't sew it. I can't even use my own glue gun. There it is. Here's what I know about when you repaint your kitchen cabinets. You don't want to hire the painter who's going to come in and do this, right? It's not going to look good. You're going to have all these brush marks. You want somebody who's going to do what's called a furniture grade finish. They are going to, what they should do when, it's, when this is done well, they should be taking your cabinet doors off, taking them back to their um, workroom, their workshop, spraying them and they're spraying them with a furniture grade finish so that you're not going to have chipping okay now in terms of the boxes themselves that are attached to your wall they're not taking those down what they, what they usually do is they tape off your kitchen in total with you know heavy plastic sheeting and they are spraying and doing a little bit of hand applied paint as well to your boxes as well okay they might be doing, depending upon the group you hire, they might do more hand applied on those boxes than less. Um, and if you are going to be repainting your cabinets, having them repainted, find out if you have glass shelves. You have to find out, are they painting the insides and sides of that those cabinets as well? Some groups don't. Okay, so just be aware on that. Linda, I hope that helped you. Um, and Because I will never tell a painter, I, I wouldn't tell a cabinet refinisher what kind of paint he should be using. I expect... I, I say hire the best, hire the right guy, hire the expert, and then empower them to do it, all right? Do their job. Final two questions coming while we're looking for those final two questions. I'll tell you that next week we're talking about kitchen trends for 20 and 21. 
got some good stuff for you there. And you can certainly bring some questions with you next week as well. Uh, and again, if you missed any portion of this uh, folder all, you can find us on YouTube, The Interior Design Advocate. And if you're not following us at The Interior Design Advocate, you would find us um, at Decorating.Genius. There it is. All right, so uh, 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 last two questions. Elaine is saying, I'm in the midst of a new build. Planned out beautiful ash gray cabinets with a medium gray glass tile splash. The white outlet covers look the white outlet outlet covers look hideous. Help. How do I paint them gray? Get new ones? I don't know about painting them gray. We tend to see a lot of outlets buried underneath cabinetry or I love telling guys just drop that outlet as low as possible on uh, close to the countertop so it becomes really easy to obscure it with the fruit bowl or the coffee maker so I would say if you're still doing this reno that is what I would do and if you've already done it I don't think I would be painting them gray I uh, gray glass because no matter what you do you're not going to get the same color as that gray glass because the outlet cover is metal. It's going to take that paint differently. I, I would love to see a picture of this, Elaine. I'm thinking that you might be over fixating on it. Get the whole kitchen in, styled, done. If you do that, if you did a great job on your kitchen design, yeah, maybe you have these outlet covers that you don't love, but if you did a great job on your kitchen design, the window treatment's great, the lighting is fabulous, the counters, the the flooring, the every every choice you made, the cabinets, really outstanding. If the first place somebody's eyeball goes to is your outlets, you did something wrong. Okay? You gotta think about what's the focal point in that kitchen. It shouldn't be the it's not gonna be your outlet. So I'm thinking you might be over fixating a little bit. In fact, I'm hoping you are. Hopefully that helps you, Elaine. Um, so Ilya saying, I should write a book with all my best design tips. Ilya, it's so funny you're saying that. Is, um, I do have a book partially written, and I just don't have the time to finish it up and get it out to you guys. But we might work on that later this year or next. Um, if I can get a little help in just pushing it out, getting it out, edit it out. So thank you. I'll keep you posted on that. I'm glad you enjoy my design support. I love supporting you guys in design. It's such a joy to me to be with you in this way. You have no idea. I had to kick a builder off the phone just now so I could come out here and be with you guys. All right. So last question. Marsha is saying, are there tile colors for an Art Nouveau loving girl with existing brown cabinetry in a great shape and a dark wood floors. Marsha, I don't even know how to answer you. That That is such a giant question, and I need pictures, and I need to take it to a showroom. So good question. I just can't answer your cookie. But thank you for putting it in. So I'm going to take another one. Um, Kristen is saying, what color tile would you put with a charcoal gray countertop? Everything I find on Pinterest shows hardwood, which is not an option. What color tile would you put with a charcoal gray countertop? Sweet pie. Kristen. Kristen Robinson. What's your design fingerprint? What's in the adjoining space? What what colors do you need to live to in your home? Can't answer that without seeing a question. All right. I'm going to see if I can get a question. I don't need to see a, uh, see a, a picture to answer. Here's a good one. I don't know who asked this. Is stainless steel out of fashion? No. It is not. Interesting. And we'll talk about this more in trend, our trend talk next week. But so many cool things happening with nettle entering the kitchen scene. So I, I assume you're asking me about um, stainless for appliances, and no, it's not. We're, we're still seeing stainless. We're seeing some, some people are not even covering their appliances as much, especially if you have a, expensive appliances. It's like, hey, I'm bragging about my appliances. Still covering those dishwashers a lot with panels when, when uh, that we're seeing a lot of, but no, we're not seeing that out. I, I would think, you know, it's really more like the white front, which is more of a builder grade, that's really seeing that and nobody's really asking for that when they're doing redoing their kitchen we're still seeing we are seeing some black appliances with that beautiful sheen yeah, I mean are still being asked asked for I'm seeing some beautiful matte black gorgeous don't know if that's gonna catch but um, I'm having such a big black and white moment in life so I don't know if you've noticed that in design I'm having a great time with it um, so I think you'll, I, I think that's out there not as commonly so and stainless is just so super easy and um, I don't see it going away anytime too quickly for 
the general loves, you know, you, you look at, you look at your, your nine square on your phone, white kitchens are still very popular. They look great on, 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 on your phone and stainless steel happens to look really good with, um, with white kitchens. Even if you're going gold on your other elements, you don't have to worry about that. You can still have that stainless uh, refrigerator front, etc. So guys, I see that there are more questions. I have to hop out because I actually have to call another builder. So I have a call I have to get into. So I do need to scooch out of here. But next week we're talking kitchen trends, 4 p.m. Tuesday. So if I didn't get to your kitchen question this week, come on back, get in early. So I can get to you because you can see how it works. I get to the earlier, the early birds get their questions in and I get to get to those sooner than, than not later. Okay. All right, lovelies. I have loved being here with you. You look great. You sound great. I love your questions. They're all intelligent questions because your brains are wired from genius. And it's just about getting you empowered with strategy to get you to make those genius ideas come to fruition, okay? So never underestimate the power of design strategy. It is what you lean into in design, not random ideas. It's all about strategy. Okay, lovelies, I'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Bye. Hugs to everybody. Hi, this is Donna. Thanks so much for watching. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and comment below so I know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe to the Interior Design Advocates channel so you don't miss any of our great content.